Hello, everyone, and welcome to this one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, today with Bill Hayner, who is seeking to return uh, to the school committee. And Bill, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for doing this. Um, one of the things that emerged, one of the main themes, of course, how could it not be, that emerged in the debate uh, that, that the school committee ha held, um, or sorry, that we held with the candidates, um, was clearly just this, this confluence of major events that, are, that we are looking uh, at uh, very shortly into the beginning of the term of the next school committee. Um, and that is, of course, how is it we're going to come out of the pandemic and open the schools? Um, you know, what, what, what is that going to look like? And then, of course, the main task on, the, on, uh, on your agenda for the fall, which is a superintendent search. And then, not exactly in the background, right? We've got the high school rebuild just starting to kick up. So I'd like to just to get your thoughts on, you know, prioritization of those things. How, how do you see this playing out, uh, you know, for the school committee? The three things that you mentioned, uh, save the pandemic, the other two would have been the priorities going forward. The pandemic is driving everything that we're doing. Thank God we have the technology to uh, implement uh, education in a remote manner. Uh, we're still feeling our way through that. Um, it is my hope that the, all the bumps and or most of the bumps will be worked out by September if we have to continue doing this. Um, I've asked that the superintendent prepare an outline for the committee before we end this season. And I'm not even sure if we're going to end the season. I'm speaking as one member. Uh, we may have to have meetings during the summer as a result of this. Um, Which you don't so, usually do. Pardon me? No, Which we don't. We, we ended in June. And unless there's an emergency, uh, we don't come back until September. Um, but uh, that being said, I asked for an outline of all the possible scenarios that we might have to uh, in, implement in September. I want us to be prepared. I don't want us to be in a reactive mode. Uh, I, I'd like to, it's difficult. It's very easy to be sitting at the top and telling people what to do. It's very hard to implement. Um, and uh, so I'd like to get ahead of the game. As far as the superintendent search, uh, last night we voted to, to uh, hire Massachusetts Association of School Committee uh, group to uh, manage our search. Uh, they've done searches in the past for us and other school committees around. There were only two applicants for it and they, according to the subcommittee and what I've read, uh, were the best applicant. So we voted that, that's in place. And as far as the rebuild of the high school, all you have to do is go down Mass Ave and see, all of a sudden you can see more of the high school and less trees. Uh, I'm happy that they've kept a lot of the trees. And if you look over the fence, you get somebody a boost, you can see some of the historic monuments that were in place, uh, they're gonna be preserved, uh, so. Yeah, you know, as you mentioned at the outset of your answer, uh, the pandemic is suffusing absolutely everything that we're, that all of us are doing and all the decisions we're making and clouding everything with uncertainty. So, acknowledging that, um, what, as far as you're concerned personally, or as a current member of the school committee, are you guys collectively, what are the, what do you see as the, the main challenges, you know, the, the things that are going to be the hardest to, to deal with right away in terms of getting school going again? I think the organization, making sure the infrastructure is there, it was difficult at the beginning to make sure that uh, all the homes and families and students had the electronics available to them. Uh, that took a while to get out. Um, we've been told that everyone has it right now. Uh, to, as I'm talking about Chromebooks and laptops and things of that nature. Um, there still seem to be some people that are having trouble with Wi-Fi, but thanks to um, the, service, uh, the three uh, providers in town, my understanding is that if you can't afford it, they'll provide it. So that getting the infrastructure in place. The second part is coordination and training and make sure. Uh, I'm 74 years old, I was a teacher, and I started thinking what it would be like to be in the classroom again with all this going on. And uh, as the viewers can see, every now and then I look at you, and I'm not looking at the camera, and then I go look, remember to look back at the camera. 
I've been trained to look at people's faces and get their reaction. And uh, it's difficult for me to look at this little thing at the, on the top of my computer right now. Mm -hmm. But teachers adapt and kids uh, adapt extremely well. Whether we're doing one-on-one -on, -one or what is going on, we need to be there to support the teachers for whatever goes on. With the material, time, and understanding of the parents that this is brand new for everybody. So, yeah, and you, yeah. speaking of brand new, you have already alluded to the fact that there have been some, some bumps in the road um, early, you know, in this, given that how abruptly everything changed. Um, uh, with the remote learning model that has been followed for the remainder of the current semester, and we may, as you've already said, have to um, rely on at, at the outset of next school year as well. Um, from parents, uh, students themselves, even teachers, we have heard that there have been, you know, that this has not been working that smoothly. Um, what can you tell us about lessons learned as far as you guys, uh, uh, you know, understand uh, going forward? Um, you know, you've, you've mentioned got to get the infrastructure set. What, what else about this is, is, is you know, is, is troublesome but, but can be dealt with? From my perspective, partly as a teacher, partly as a grandparent, everything, is understanding on both sides and, and, and not be defensive. Be supportive of each other. If there's a problem, communicate the problem in a way that the, that the person that you're talking to listens. And I say that both ways, both from the, from the parents to the, to the school, from the school to the parents. Uh, we both have one thing in common, and that's the, the betterment in education and the safety of, of the children in this town, as well as the staff involved in this. Um, we need to have a plan 100% going work out all the bugs in September. Whatever that plan is, whether we bring the children back in a safe environment, um, that is the priority. Education is the secondary thing. Safety is first in my mind, uh, education is second. And the education part is for everybody. Um, we, we, you and I are both beating this drum. We're new, this is new area. Um, my two grandchildren are uh, in a, a high school that has been doing re remote learning as part of their program. They have their students working projects together all the time. So they find it easier, but they're still having problems themselves. I talked to a couple of the teachers there and they've had some problems. Uh, they're working them up. So I don't know if I answered your question well enough. Yeah, no, that, I mean, <laughs> there are no definitive answers. So absolutely, I mean, and just good to know, of course, for us and the viewers, I think, you have clear priorities, safety first, education, of course, always so important, but definitely second to safety and you'll, and decisions will have to be made according to those priorities as far as you're concerned. I'd like to emphasize again, just by repeating it, that the communication be done in a way that benefits everyone. That if there's a problem, let us know. Uh, and if the, if the administration or the teachers have a problem, we need to communicate it in a positive way to the uh, to the community as well. And what is what is the role and what are the limits to what the school committee can do in addressing these things? The school committee prior to 1993 was totally autocratic. They could run every element of the school system. After 1993, we have three elements: the policy, the budget, and hiring a superintendent. Saying that. Because we have the purse strings, as long as there are four votes or more, uh, we, can we can get down to the nitty gritty. We are the spokespeople for the community. We are one of the things, but understanding that we have to be informed, we have, to, we have limits within the structure of, of our mandates and stuff. That doesn't say that we are, we're not available to listen to the parents or the community itself and we can bring it forward. Uh, it has been done. Um, I, am, I am proud to say that this committee is, we don't always agree, but we, we disagree in a positive way and uh, present each other with the facts and things of that nature. Can you be a little bit more specific about that? I mean, because I think people are very uh, concerned about the internal functioning, the dynamic going on in important okay. government bodies here, school committees, you know, select board and others. 
Um, so when you say, of course, you don't always agree, but you, but you disagree constructively, let's say, yes. right? What do you mean by that? Um, let me think. Um, if there's something going forward, I can't think of a specific example because we, we usually, the, the, if something is brought forward and I'm not in, I don't feel that it is appropriate or I don't feel we have enough information, I will ask for more information. I will ask for clarification. Um, if a member uh, disagrees with me, uh, they, will, they have the, the right and the freedom to express that disagreement. Uh, and, and we deal with facts. Uh, this board, uh, it really wants the information and the facts. Um, if the superintendent brings something forward and we're not comfortable with it, this board has been asked for more information and will defer the vote unless it's an emergency. And uh, we let the superintendent know, and th this happens really, I, I wanna emphasize this, but if something is brought up at the last minute and it's an emergency, uh, we may pass it, but the superintendent knows we're not happy about having that pressure put on us. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if that answers. Yeah, so uh, I, I think what what I understand you to say is that it's a it's an environment you guys have tr together created an environment which there's enough mutual trust and respect that you're going to be able to disagree and do so in a way that doesn't alienate each other Absolutely. and allows you to keep moving Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Uh, real quick, I came on the board nine years ago, uh, and I was perceived as an outlier. I had, an, in an open meeting, basically uh, suggested that the top administration be fired by the school committee, and uh, we were fortunate. Uh, we had a uh, seminar where all the school committee me members, and it was an open meeting, it just happened to be on Saturday mornings and no one else ever came, where we ironed out, we had a, a, a facilitator who talked to us and told us how to disagree in a productive manner. And, and it, the, the first meeting of every year, usually right at, it's right after the election, a document is read, it's part of our policy of how we communicate, and we, the document is passed around and we all sign it. That's a pledge to go forward in this positive way. Okay. Um, we only have two minutes left, okay. but I wanted to ask you, try and step away from the COVID-19 lens through which we see everything. Thinking about your nine-year tenure um, already, and um, what changes would you like to see um, moving forward um, to make sure that we're creating a, you know, um, an engaging and relevant 21st century education for our students? That's a tough one, because a lot of the things have happened in the past nine years going in that direction. I'm very happy with the, the things going forward. Um, oh, it's a great question. Uh, Does, is that, are you saying that like lots of work has already been done? A lot of work has been done. A lot of work has been done in communication. Um, I would like to see uh, the special education uh, program continue in the, in the direction it's going. Uh, a lot of the staff that's been hired, um, I, I, I think communication with parents in the special education uh, area is very important. Um, when I came on, I'm a child advocate outside of the community. I, it's a conflict of interest for me to do it in Arlington. They need, they need to, we need to continue going in the productive, proactive way that we've been going. Uh, it's slow. I know people want change immediate, uh, but it, I believe it's going forward. We will have at least one new member on the committee uh, coming up, possibly two. Um, it's, I think it's going in a positive way. Okay. Well, with that, we will conclude the conversation. That, uh, again, 15 minutes Zoom by. I have been talking to Bill Hainer, a uh, veteran member of the school committee seeking re-election. Uh, Bill, thanks again for joining us. And to you out in the audience, thank you for joining us. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time.